Hello and welcome to the Subculture. My name is Jared. And I'm Edwina. And if you listen to this, this is our Once More We're Feeling series on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Today, Eddie and our listeners, we are doing Season 5, Episode 20, Spiral. This episode first aired May 8th, 2001, written by Stephen S. Knight and directed by James A. Contina. Over to you, Eddie. This is a full spoiler podcast. I'm a huge fan, but Jared has never watched the series all the way through, and I'm trying to convince him it's worth his time. Yeah, well, we're getting into the crux of it now, Eddie. We're right on the home stretch. These last few episodes are really building up to something, aren't they? Yes, yes. We have only got two more episodes left. Mm -hmm. So we are definitely on the home stretch. I will say that this is the second time we've had to record. No, no, you're not saying that. (laughs) I'm saying Jared forgot to press record, so I'm a little... No, you're not. You're fine. We're about halfway through. And now we've had to re-record. Mm, that's all right. We, we, we've got all the good stuff now, so we, we know what we've got to say. We've already rehearsed. Sure, sure. Ah, Eddie. Right. So, Spiral. What spiral. do you think of Spiral? So, I have already said that Season 5 is my one of my Le- least, least favourite seasons. Um, you know, even though Glory is fantastic and we love Glory as the we big We love bad. it. She's a great villain. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's those damn nights. Those... Knights of Me, Knights, Knights of Balthazar, no, Byzant- Byzantium, whatever it is. Um, I think they are just the most pointless addition to this season. I think they could be very easily written out. Yeah. They make zero sense in this world. <laughs> like, no. Yeah, there's um, Knights yeah. of Me. We've got a lot to say about them. Don't worry about yeah. that. All right. Well. Um, so, yeah, this episode, it is a... Uh, do you like this one? This top yeah, tier? No, no. This is probably one of my least. Oh, yeah. This episode, it's yeah. Pretty, pretty down on the bottom of the bottom. It's a bottom barrel episode. Bottom tier. Yeah, bottom yeah. tier. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, all right. Um, okay, well, let's do, do the summary and get back to it. All righty then. Picking up right where we left off, the end of Tough Love, with Tara outing Dawn as the key in front of Glory. Buffy and Dawn run for their lives. They escape thanks to Willow's magic and a large semi-truck slamming into Glory out on the street, causing her to transform into Ben. The gang gathers in Xander's apartment and discusses possible plans of action. Buffy decides it's time for all of them to run away. Spike solves their transportation problem by procuring a sun-protected Winnebago. The Knights of Ni retrieve Orlando from Sunnydale Memorial, who babbles that the key is a shiny girl, prompting the Knights' leader... General Gregor to realise the key is the Slayer's sister. Worried about their future plans, Buffy is comforted by Dawn until the Knights attack. A sword through the roof nearly stabs Buffy, but Spike stops it with his bare hands. While Buffy fights the Knights from the top of the RV, one Knight impales Giles with a flying spear, causing the RV to crash onto its side. The Scoobies seek shelter in an abandoned gas station where Buffy fends off the attackers until Willow performs a force field spell. Buffy manages to take General Gregor hostage in the scuffle. She proceeds to question the General who reveals that Glory once ruled over the Hell Dimension as part of a triad of suffering and despair only to be banished by the other two when they grew to fear her. As a result, Glory was trapped inside a mortal body in which she was meant to lay dormant. He also reveals the key was created to open the gateways between dimensions and Glory intends to use this power to return to her own dimension. However, this will also dissolve the boundaries between dimensions and destroy all of them. Realising Giles is seriously injured, Buffy arranges a deal with the Knights to allow a doctor to safely pass. She calls Ben and he stabilises Giles. Alone with him, the General tempts him with the idea of killing Dawn. Ben realises Glory is about to take over his body and he tries to leave the force field, but Glory soon comes forth. Glory kills General Gregor, fights off the Scooby gang to take Dawn and bursts through the force field. By the time Willow releases the field to go after Glory, the Hell Goddess has disposed of all the knights and disappeared with Dawn. Buffy abruptly sits down on the ground, crying as Willow tries to call her the end. So it is left on a cliffhanger. Yep, another cliffhanger. 
you know, what are they going to do? How are they going to beat Glory? You know, at the, you know, there's nothing. Oh, I know how they're going to beat Glory. There's nothing they can do. They could just kill Ben. They don't know who Ben is. Oh, that's right. They forget. Yes. <laughs> I forgot. They forget. They don't know who Ben is. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, you know, it is looking very dire for them all at the moment. Like, how are they ever going to come back from this? Oh, right. Um, right. So, on that note, let's, where are we going to start? Well, let's let's go go with the Knights of Byzantium. Knee. The Knights slash. of Knee. The Knights of Knee, Eddie. Ugh, that, you rolled your eyes when these guys first appeared on the screen and you I think you've put your fist in the air when they're all dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck, they're gone. Pretty much they are the most pointless part of this season. I think they are just absolutely useless. Um, um, and they just, they take me out of it because they, I don't know, there are just so many plot holes around them finding her in the Winnebago. And, you know, it's like, that they're in this forest and there's like smoke. I mean, like mist. Smoke, mist, mist. in the it's middle like of the day. It's the middle of the day and there's, they're in like this misty forest. And I was just like, do forests actually, like they do that in the morning, but like. More in the tropics, I think, if anything. Well, like like that can happen. Some, but yeah, it's just very, this very weird <laughs> smoke machine. Like wherever these nights guys are. I'd like to bring the smoke machine to them, yes. They've got a smoke machine with them. Yeah. Uh, and he speaks to this guy for two seconds and he's like, you know, shiny girl. And that's when Gregor's like, oh, the Slayer has her, let's march. And he's marching his soldiers to find the Slayer. Like, but wouldn't they go to like her house? Hmm. But instead they managed to like teleport to the Winnebago. Because, which is in the middle of fucking nowhere. Which is, yeah, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, how they found them, fuck knows. Uh, they just roll up. And I know previously in the story, Giles mentions how slow the Winnebago is, so they've established that. But even so, they managed to catch up with them with horses, which horses don't run that fast. And we were talking like, what, 40 Ks max, you know, 30 mm. miles or something. <laughs> if that, you not know, for long. Even, even so, that's only for five, ten minutes at that speed they could probably hold. Yeah. And even that would be pushing them, I'd imagine. Um, with them on it, with right people on it, and all their chain mail. <laughs> yeah. But they're also fighting it like the bows and arrows and. Attacking it with bows and arrows, yes. It's like it's a monster from a. Like... Well, it, it almost felt to me like um, as, as if like they traveled back in time and were attacked by knights who didn't know what the thing was and thought it was some sort of beast. And they go, stab it, man, go for its throat, you know? And it was stabbing the Winnebago and, and hitting it with bows and arrows. And. Yeah, because the guy got up on the on top of the on top of the Winnebago and was like ramming his sword through it and 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 weird shit like that. And a guy had a mace as well. Yeah, like there's <laughs> like why there's like a mace. These and... medieval weapons are like a thousands of years old. Like, yeah, we've, we've, we have evolved beyond this. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, if you showed if you showed someone that clip, they would probably assume that they've been transported back in time. Yeah, this is like uh, Ash from Evil Dead, you know? <laughs> yes, yeah. And they're actually attacking the Winnebago thinking it's a monster. And he's telling but my boomstick! <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, very, very goofy scene, uh, to yeah. be sure, yeah. But I was like, they just, they create so many questions in my mind. Like, they just, apps, like, they really, like, there's sort of always this suspension of disbelief in these sort of shows. Yeah. But I just have none when it comes to these guys. They I mean, just it, it seemed like they have sort do, of do evolved. they do they just get the a wizard did it <laughs> explanation. <laughs> they did have they did have wizards, didn't they? But they were like monks. Were the guys chanting on a thing? Oh like, yeah. Well maybe maybe that is how they do it. Maybe it maybe that's what it is okay. and I just need to calm down. Yeah, well um, wizard did it. Yeah, they had wizards. Just a, just a wizard did it. So that's that's probably what it was. But um, yeah. All right. Ah, yeah. Well, whenever you notice something like that, a wizard did it. But it seems like they are able to adapt to modern times because you saw them walking around in clothing, modern yeah. day clothing. Yeah. So they know they ha they can't just walk around in their chain mail because people will be like, what yeah, well, what's you the point? <laughs> like, what's the point? You feel like they could almost do them like a, a Sons of Anarchy. Well, not, well, not Sons of Anarchy, but like, maybe like bikers or something. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah, they'd be like a gang wearing similar clothing, but they're really knights. But they're trying to blend in a little more. Yeah. Because people walking around in chainmail tends to draw a little attention. Just a little bit. And your big helmets and your big swords and stuff. Because yeah, you but- don't need swords. You can just use guns. Which is another well, thing I often well, notice in this show. Bikers would make more sense at this point. Well, I'm always thinking if they were bikers, because that way they'd be chasing her on a motorbike, and that would make sense it that would, they would catch it up. It would to have her. worked a lot better if they were bikers. <laughs> but they saved that for next season. Oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, fair enough. Well, they've got to have some sort of twist on it, I guess. And yeah. it's, and look, as goofy as that scene does look, it's uh, it's something, all right. Um, I will say something about that. Um, According to Stephen S. Knight in the original script, the chase scene was a 10-minute long action scene that culminated with Buffy getting smacked into a tree and fighting Glory with a sheared lamp pole. Joss read it and said, this is great. This is wonderful. Kubrick couldn't film this in 20 days with $5 million. So cut everything I'm like, great, okay, that's fine. As long as I get the knights chasing the Winnebago. Yeah. <laughs> Come back here! So that I may play thee! <laughs> and he gets her, she gets a buffy sword fight on top of yeah, the yeah. on top of the Kill someone for the first Winnebagos. time, apparently. <laughs> well, yeah, that does bring up the other thing is that the knights are human. But they're idiots. They are idiots. Um Oh, that's that weird thing in the hospital where the guy was about to <laughs> Was about to, like, she's like, excuse me. And he, like, go, puts up his arm to pull out a sword. Oh, yeah. He's about to stab her. her. Like, so he's like, like, she's just like, I just want my pen back. Like, was, that, was he about to stab her? Yes. <laughs> Not subtle are these guys, are they? No. I, no. I feel no sympathy for the Knights of Knee. No. And, and this is the last time we ever see them oh, good, as well. So they, so they get taken out. By glory, very very quickly, very easily too. Mm. Well, in fact, it was an off off camera thing too. You just hear some fighting, and then you go out there, and everyone's dead. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and as I said, they are just so pointless. So, well, how were they going to stop glory? I mean, their their plan was to kill, destroy the key. Yeah. But they went and took on glory. Like you'd think, they know who glory is, and the smartest thing to do would be not to fight her mm. because. They would just die. Yeah. And then they would not complete their mission. Then they'd be... But do you think that they would have like some magical weapons? Well, they've got wizards. Well, they've, yeah. Well, they'd have something other than prayer to save them. They seem to just be, my my old mighty, mighty God will <laughs> save us. Yeah. How's that working out for you? <laughs> yeah. They're, they're pretty terrible. But I, I actually just think that the season would have been better without them in it. Well, I think maybe they're there as part of an exposition to tell Buffy or who Glory was, like from yeah, another that, point that, of that view. Could have been, that could have easily been done by one of the minions. Yeah, I guess. You could get, you yeah. could get, they could have just been fleeing town and, you know, they end up in a car accident and they call on Ben to come and help them. Like it's. Yeah, I guess. But it needed to all sort of come to a circle or yeah, something. They needed I don't know. They needed a some sword some sort of yeah. They needed right. a sword fight on top of Winnebago, and that's probably how it started. <laughs> like it started with that as a thought in their head, and they were like, "How do we write backwards from there? Yeah, how, how do we make that? How do we make that scene ha- happen? We want, want Buffy, we want Buffy on top of a Winnebago fighting with a sword with a knight. Okay, now work backwards from there of how we get to that point. I don't fucking care how, but do it. Yeah, yeah. So, well, the other thing is, how are they like communicating with each other? These knights. Mm, I don't know. And how are they looking after these horses? Like horses take a lot of what, like yeah, I know. To, you they can't have just... to, you know, they need shoes and they need lots of food and like water lots of, lots and of care. Like they're not that easy. Like, they had a fair few horses too. They had so. a few horses. So well, this goes back to being bikers, where you don't, you know, you can just. That's why like... farmers got rid of horses years ago. <laughs> Well, some still have horses. No, they don't. Of course they would. No, to, just to ride if, around. If on. they have horses, it's their their pets. They don't they don't yeah. work. They're, yeah, Hello. they're pets. Um, I'm Mr. Ray. All right, so I'll I'll let the knights have one thing, and it is that Gregor does have all of that exposition that he spills out in this episode. It's probably one of the few good things about this episode. Yeah, well, I felt that was pretty important to find out 
you know, for them to find out more information about what the key is and why, why are they actually doing all this. Yeah. Because at the moment they're just running away from glory, but they don't really they don't really know what to do or why or how or why she even wants the key. Yeah. And what, what she does. What, what it's for. Yeah. Is it actually? So it's, evil? Take, it's taken twenty episodes from to get to this point. Yeah. Uh, and you know, and Xander brings up that. Like so, I think at one point Spike. Oh, that well, I should mention that Spike has been forgiven for being a creep. Yes, he has. He just rolled up, and uh, it kind of shocked everyone when uh, everyone saw him. To be honest, when yeah. they all saw him. Yeah, so he's pretty much been a massive creep all season. Yeah, the bu- <laughs> Buffy dolls, the Buffy um, bots. Yeah, he kidnapped Buffy at one point. Oh, that's right. Yeah, kidnapped yes, her. Yes, he kidnapped her. Uh, yes, like it, it hasn't been great. No, so yeah. well, I guess it just showed she was kind of desperate, maybe, and thought that's the only person she knew. Could well, help. she knew that he would help, and Thank he you. would yeah. he would actually protect her and Dawn. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that there is the issue that he can't fight. The, well, so there's sort of um, Spike sort of says maybe he could just grab Dawn and make a run for it, and Xander brings up that you you know you can't actually fight these guys because. They're human. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sets off your chip. But then yeah. Buffy kills a bunch of them. So, and that's never. She gets to have all the fun. never, ever brought up again that she, she kills like 10 of them or something. And it's like. like well, she impaled one and the others kind of fell off. Yeah. You well, know. Foul, thrown. Thrown, <laughs> fell off. Like it's just never brought up again how many, like, you know, Faith kills one person and it's, you know, she's in prison for it. And Buffy kills like 10 guys. Yeah. In, in a, with Winnebago and uh, no one cares. No. No one's... No, That's fine. Nobody, Don't worry about yeah. it. It's all right. It's all good. All good. All, yeah. all is forgiven. Yeah. They're dead anyway, so there's no one to yeah. sort of care. So, yeah, Zan- Xander is also trying to, like, kind of sneaking around behind Buffy's back. Is he? Well, yeah, so he's sort of behind there snickering to Giles, kind of saying, you know, she's, Buffy's losing it, you know. Um, oh, he has a conversation in Winnebago, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, about Spike being there and the fact that they're probably going to have to kill Dawn. And mm. <laughs> like that's that's another thing that comes up again um, is that they might actually have to kill Dawn. And I wouldn't be upset by that. <laughs> yeah. I know they won't. But, but that, that's sort of this dilemma that's going on is that, like, what those, what is the. What do you call it? The you know sort of that philosophy: you kill one, killing lives one. of a few out, outweigh yeah, the yeah, lives yeah. of the many. Yeah. So it's you know the kill, Star Trek kill thing. the one to save millions. Yeah. You know, kill that one person and you save millions of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and they try to they kind of do a bit of a red herring with Ben. So, yeah. Because uh, it looks at one point that he's going to kill. Dawn. Oh yeah, with the syringe, and he sort of yeah, walks up behind yeah. her, and he pauses, and he as he walks, and he just yeah, yeah, he just uh, doesn't yeah. he and doesn't that, kill her. And that Greg old guy had actually spoken to him and been like, you know, you you can kill the girl, mm. like just telling him to to kill this to kill oh, a little girl. That's something. Uh, Glory knew Gregor. Yeah, well, I'm guessing they must have crossed paths at some time before. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, it's Gregor. And then immediately. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Killed him with a hubcap. Yeah. Wow, I didn't see that coming. No, and like so quickly. It was just, you know, yeah. nonchalant. Didn't even pause. Didn't even pause, yeah. So they all know it's glory. Glory's Ben. Ben is glory. Well, not really because I think there's some sort of powerful spell. Oh, that's right because uh, Dawn was there when Ben mm. turned into glory. Yeah. Yeah. But then, then she forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Some weird spell because that'll be the way to kill him when he's human. Yes, I'd imagine. Yeah, but they don't know that, but the audience does. Yes. So I don't really have any more talking points. Uh, on this to- one, do you? Uh, yeah, talking about Glory. Mm-hmm. So she's got super speed. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. we saw her super speed. Yeah. Flashing down. Yeah. <laughs> Kind Down of this w- very weird scene and Buffy's like carrying Dawn. It's very weird. Yeah. Because um, at this point, I think the actress that plays Dawn is actually bigger than Buffy. So yeah. <laughs> it looks weird having Buffy carrying this yeah. very large girl. Mm-hmm. 
Well, it's a it's a Slayer strength, yes. Yes. But yeah, yeah, Dawn's super speed. So yeah, is that it's in a glory? Min- oh, glory, sorry, glory. Well, not really, but she's a hell dimension. So why not? Based. It wasn't off the table. You didn't really, you didn't really know. Can she her. fly? No, because we've seen her plummet. Oh right, okay. Yeah. So she can't fly. She can't fly, but she's got super speed. Yeah. Well, that sucks. So, and uh, super strength. Super strength. Okay. Uh, uh, I was going to say, had you seen this episode? Um, I think I may have seen this episode. The the scene where they're inside the um the gas station, the abandoned gas station. Yeah. I think I've definitely seen that scene. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and did you go down any rabbit holes? Uh, no, not today. Not tonight, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. All right. Did we want to get into question time? Uh, yeah, let's do question time. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. And I want to have them answered immediately. Okay, Jared, which character was your favorite in this episode? Um, I like Spike. Yeah, I went with Glory. Glory? Yeah. Okay, yeah. She's pretty funny in this one. Uh, which character do you love to hate? Uh, yeah, Tara, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, the shiny, shiny pulls the pulls mm. Venetian blinds down and burns Spike. Yeah. Have to fix her up soon. <laughs> How are they ever going to do that? I don't know, Eddie. I think it's, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's just got to be the Knights of... Byzantium. Yeah. Okay. Uh, LOL moment. Uh, it has to be the knights chasing the Winnebago. It was kind of hilarious, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's probably it's a funny moment. So Xander is suffering from really bad like motion sickness. Yeah, that was a funny little uh, plot they had going, didn't they? Yeah. Has that and ever been mentioned before? Or never. Okay. Yeah. Um. So he's like. Trying not to throw up. Yeah. And he's having a go at Spike and then all Spike says to him is shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> and he walks off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he says shrimp and then. Yeah. <laughs> Instant gag reflex on that yeah. one. Yeah. Also, I do like the don't hit the horsies. Hit the horsies. And then it's a we won't aim for the horsies. <laughs> All right. Uh, favorite fight scene? Uh, the knights chasing the Winnebago. Yeah, I've got it. Nothing quite like Buffy on swinging a sword around on top of a Winnebago. Yeah, I felt like they had to plan that one, didn't they? Oh yeah. Uh, favorite scene? The knights chasing <laughs> the Winnebago. <laughs> it's just all the same scene. <laughs> uh, I went with Gregor's exposition scene about Glory, where we get. Get a mm. bit more information. Yeah, that was quite interesting. And what is your least favourite scene? Oh, so they had that night that they took, f- that they rescued from the psychiatric ward. Yeah. Um, and then they get him all dressed up, and yeah. then they kill him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I had as my really least favorite. just yep. just a long list of. Dumb things that these yeah. knights and knee did. Just why did you even bother? Why? With that? Why fucking bother going? Why did you bring him all the way over there if you're just going to kill him? Yeah, but they're like, oh, we'll, we'll put him out of his misery. Yeah, well, they kind of already figured he was screwed because they know that she does scramble their yeah, minds. Yeah. yeah. And favorite quote. Uh, my favorite quote uh, was Dawn to Spike. Uh, Keep the pressure on. Spike replies, "Always do, sweet bit." <laughs> My favourite co- quotes from Xander. We got company and they bought a crusade. <laughs> that's that's a good one. That's sure a good one. They sure did. They yeah. sure did. Uh, that's, that's the other thing. They start going with the flaming arrows as well. <laughs> like, oh, I, just, I just shake my head. At it. Like it, Rewatching it again, it just seems so ridiculous. Like if you were... As you said, if you were just to put the show on and you, you'd think they'd travel back in time to see these goofy guys in chain mails attacking mm. a Winnebago like it's some sort of beast. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Who gets the wooden spoon? Well, there's only one person who can get the wooden spoon. Who's that? 
Actually, there's lots of persons who there's get the wooden spoon. Yes, <laughs> We're going to say anything different. It, you knew we'd be knights, lying. Is it the Knights of Knee? It's the Knights of Knee. Yeah. All right. They get it. They, they got can, it. They can always get it. Yeah. They own it. Uh, who's the MVP of the episode? Uh, I think Willow might be the MVP. She threw up that that spell. Yeah, all right. Yeah, off. Yeah. Nah, she can, she can have it. Yeah, she can have yeah. it. She said don't kill the horses. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that works, I guess. Yeah. Uh, what do you rate this episode? Oh, you, you, did you? Oh, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I'll go with Willow. Yeah, you go with Willow? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to agree with that. Oh, shit. Okay. What do you rate this episode out of 10 using something from the episode? I'll give it five pairs of goggles. <laughs> five pairs of... <laughs> those weird, black goggles he had. Weird those blackout goggles? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll give it four out of 10 horsies. Oh, my poor horsies. My poor horsies. <sighs> All right, Eddie. Uh, well, it's going to be a short episode, but uh, was there anything else you wanted to add? Because I'm just thinking, do we do next two in a double episode maybe? or No, I think, well, I probably should have done this one and Tough Love as a double episode, Okay. to be honest. But then I don't want to do the last episode as a double episode. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So two more episodes in the season yeah. to go. All right. Yeah. Well, something to look forward to then. Uh, on that note... Well, I hope you've enjoyed listening to us tonight. We are Nerd Subculture. My name is Jared. I'm Edwina. And if you like what you can do, you can uh, do what Eddie says. Uh, you can find us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, I mean X, um, and there is a Facebook page. And if you want to help out the podcast, please follow the link tree on the socials for our merch store. Also, t- I hope TikTok doesn't get banned in America. <laughs> It's a hope not. And it's very close. It's going, it might happen. Who knows? All right. Until next time. See ya. Bye. Okay, bye. Well, whenever you notice something like that, a wizard did it.